Hello everybody, it's Adam here coming back to you from Houdini 15 and today we're going to make a font fill up with fluid. So we'll control click the font, we'll dive inside, we'll type the letters AP, so the font size to 5, and we'll drop down a poly extrude, and we'll visualize that, distance 0.75, divisions two and we will output the back and then to clean it up a little we'll drop down a facet and we will uniqueify points. Let's turn off the grid. I'm going to press the D key, choose background and from the menu select dark. I'm going to press the W key and then I'm going to space bar mouse wheel out. This is going to be our fluid boundary. So each letter is going to fill up. Let's go up one level and we'll type geo fluid boundary. Okay, we need to make a new geo now. And this will be our emitter. So it's going to be geo fluid emitter. Let's dive inside, throw the file away, and I'm going to drop down a tube set its radius to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, the radius scale to 0 0.1, and the height to 0 0.01. So it's going to be a very small, thin disk here, and it's going to sit down here and pump out fluid. So let's go ahead and drop down a transform now. And Before I go too far, let's go back to the tube. We need to set this to mesh. All right, now we can visualize the transform. And uh, I think I have some numbers here. Let's drop this in. Negative 0 0.76, um, negative 1.07, negative 0 0.31. Now I also want to drop down a point so that I can add velocity to my volume and control it right here. So we'll visualize the point, activate the particle tab, and choose Add Velocity. We'll right click on the word Velocity, choose Delete Channels, they're all black, and then we'll just type a value in one direction. In this case we put it in Y, which is X, Y, Z, and positive is up. So let's drop down, say, a, a null here, and we will call this, um, what, Out Emitter. And we want two of these, so I'm just going to copy and paste those. And we will merge them together. We'll drop down a merge. And connect those in. We'll visualize the merge. Now when I select the transform, we can type in a few more numbers. 0 0.497, negative 2.1, and negative 0 0.3. So now you can see we have two little disks that are going to uh, emit fluid, one in each letter. Let's go up one level and we can, we're ready to use the tools shelf, the shelf tools. So select particle fluids, select our emitter, click on emit particles, read the message, move your mouse into this window, press enter, wait, and that's going to generate kind of a, an empty fluid simulation for us. And we want to make sure everything is inside the uh, mesh for each letter. And if my numbers don't match or you've picked a different font or something, just adjust your transforms as you need them. Let's go up one level and press the L key and then we'll select the fluid boundary, activate rigid bodies and make it a static object. Now we can dive into the auto dot network, press the L key, and we have all of our setup done for us by our shelf tools. So we can just start tweaking nodes here. Now because we're inside the boundary, we need to invert it. So we'll select the collision tab and we'll activate laser scan and invert sign. And I'm going to type in 94 for my uniform divisions. If you've never seen this before, it's worthwhile. We'll turn off display geometry, turn on collision guide. You know, it's worth checking this out. Now here's our default. So you can see that's a pretty low res collision mesh. And uh, we'll up this to 94. That's a little better. You could even go higher if you want it. 
we'll turn this off and restore the display of the geometry. Now over here in the flip fluid object, I think we're ready to go if we were to uh, say drop this to something like 96, activate real time, and let's just kick off a sim here. We'll wait it out. We're, we're pretty much at the default settings, but this effect of rising fluid is kind of independent of the resolution. So you can work at a lower resolution to get your motion down. Then when you kick it up, the uh, same should apply. And as you can see, we're getting a little lift, which is coming from that uh, ran that velocity from that point attribute that we added, uh, or the point node that adds the velocity. But we're not getting any rising pressure. The, the letters are not filling up. So we have to add pressure to the system. And that gets plugged in here through the volume velocity of input 3. Now, if, with the fluid object selected, let's mouse down here and turn on Add Divergence Field. And we want to take a source volume, so let's create a new one. Press Tab, type Volume, choose Source. We'll plug it into 3. And we want to use the same exact volume path, so we will copy that parameter and paste it as a relative reference here. And we're going to set this to copy, and we're not using temperature or velocity, so I'm going to zero them out just so it's clear that they're having no effect. What we're going to do is we're going to use this source volume to route to a field called divergence, which we turned on in this fluid object. So let's blank all these out, and we'll type the word divergence. Now I'm going to go up here and press Control A and highlight all this text, and copy it to the clipboard, and paste it down here. Now this isn't the exact um, copy we need, but it's close enough. And really all I'm changing is source path. And if I hover over this, you can see this is the source path. Uh, there's the tooltip source path. But what we want to use is the source volume, which is actually the name of this node down here. So we'll type the word name here. And then I'll press the home key and uh, I'll get rid of this OP so that we're just getting a string channel value of the name itself. Let's press enter and we will turn up our volume quite a bit. We'll set it to 10 just to see if it's working or not. And now if we rewind and I'm going to forward sim instead of hitting play. What this does is it kicks off some numbers and it's calculating uh, all the different frames or your cache but it's not displaying them so it goes a little bit faster uh, than actually hitting the play button. And now let's rewind. We have a full cache here and we should be able to see it close to real time and we're getting 20 frames a second. And look what's happening. Everything is filling up. We're seeing pressure applied to the system, but it's also blowing out. That's what these white, um, these white velocities are all about. That's particles that are escaping the boundaries because they just have so much velocity that the barrier doesn't work. That the step between, like if this particle were right here, and then the next frame it thinks it's here, that's missing that connection that there's a wall and they're jumping out. So the only way I've figured out how to control this, and another thing you'll notice is there, the P filled up way faster than the A. And you wonder why. Why did that, why did one side fill up more than the other? So what we really need is a volume or a pressure knob for each letter. And the only way I've been able to figure out how to do this is to simply clone this whole flip solver. So I'm going to do a select all these nodes, copy, move into the open area here, press paste, kind of move them up into a nice location, and then deselect them all, and then click this bottom connector and run that into the merge. So now we have two source volumes, but they may be kind of cross-linked because of some of these names that we've typed in here, right? Out surface. So we're going to go back to obj, jump into our emitter, and we're going to make a better emitter here. So we know we need this out surface. 
we know we need a volume um, but we really just want this to go into this volume and this to go to here and then maybe uh, down here we would merge things back together right um, so let's go ahead and select both of these copy move over here and paste and we'll plug this side into here and then we'll merge these back together whoops once again deselect then then select the bottom connector we'll visualize our merge so we can see we we have them both in place again we don't need this one uh, but we now have a name out surface one that we can reference inside the second fluid system so let's just type up one there and if you recall this here was relative referenced so we don't need to worry too much we may have to actually adjust this name though now looks like emitter one it, it correctly did that but it's worth checking this should say emitter one which would be this guy right here and this one is correctly mapped to so if this really works then I should be able to go to this here source volume 2 and just set its pressure to zero and now if I rewind and I sim I should see and this time we'll hit play just so we can kind of watch it happen I should see this P kind of gets that initial little burst from its velocity and then it gets no more pressure but you can see the A over here it definitely has some pressure going on and it is filling up while the P is not so I believe we have got the system set up the way we want so now we just figure out okay how quickly do we want this to fill so say it's 72 a maybe we want it to be like a 14 and then maybe on the P we would want it to be like a say 6 and let's see what we get out of that we'll press play here initial velocities happen uh, we are getting some climbing effect out of P it's really hard to tell um, when you have such a low frame rate what the actual speed really is but we'll let it calculate and do its thing and you can see once we get to 72 the A is full and starts bouncing out but P still needs more pressure so we can do a few things here now that we have two controls we could go to 72 here and we will work on the a we know it's going to be full there so what I'm going to do is set that to zero and I'm going to alt click I'm just going to drop a keyframe there and then we'll go back to 71 and I'm going to set this to say 12 whoops alt click on that so now after frame 71 no more pressure is going to be applied to the a and I think we can raise this guy up a little bit more so you can see um, having a pressure source for each letter is really makes it really easy to adjust um, or art direct how this fill is occurring and I'm still not seeing enough here with this nine although that's looking a little bit closer and what I might want to do is actually go back to my emitter and on this point maybe we'll double this initial jump up because we have a lot of vertical space that we can cover right here and we'll dive back in to our auto dot network and maybe I will set this one to 10 and we'll rewind hit play you can see we get a lot higher burst up here which kind of balances out our logo we get some uh, fluid running over into this area and it should kind of it looks like 10 is too much though at that point so we can kind of rewind back we'll drop this say to 7 and we'll hit play again and we should get the same initial jump up and then we get a little bit rollover and this looks good it's balanced between the two letters But I think that initial velocity definitely changed how this value was working so I'm going to drop this back down to say 2 and then rewind and play and this is the nature of sims you just keep playing with them playing with the numbers to try and get what you want out of them 
that's looking a lot more even as far as how the fluids are rising and moving. And now the A is filling up quickly. The P is rising too. And now that we've passed frame 72, no more pressure is being applied to the A. So you can see it just dropped back down. And we'll watch it at real time now. We're getting some particles filling up, it drops back down. So that's it. It's basically playing with keyframes at this point and conducting multiple sims. But this is at least one way that um, you can uh, set up separate pressure for different letters or different shapes for filling uh, a fluid based object, basically, or a logo that you want to fill up with fluid. So with that, play with it and have some fun, and I'm out.